I know that love is something we all look for throughout our lives, and I was lucky enough to find it. But unfortunately, it was taken away from me way too early. I met my wife in college. She was an art major, and I studied finance. I always wanted to be rich, and I thought that finance was the way to go. At a frat party, when me and my buddies were getting drunk out of our minds, the most beautiful girl came through the door. She had blonde hair, green eyes, and a figure that would put most models to shame. Sure enough, every guy there wanted to get with her, and as hard as they tried, nothing came out of it. I knew she was out of my league, and I was the only one who didn't approach her that night. I guess that made me stand out, because as the party went on, and I was sitting on the couch trying to sober up as I had an exam the next day, she sat right next to me. Nice shirt, she said, as she revealed the most enchanting smile I ever saw. I remember it as if it were yesterday. I had a Blink-182 shirt. It was my favorite band at the time, and it seemed that she was also a fan. Thanks, I said, while the room was spinning around me. We started talking, and seeing that I was kind of dizzy, she brought me a coffee. It was love at first sight, for me at least. She later said that it was also for her, but I didn't buy it. Fast forward, and there we were on our wedding day. We both graduated college, and after I met her, I really got on track. I stopped drinking so much and found myself a great job right after college. It paid well, and I can say that the future looked bright. The party was amazing. I spared no expense and gave her the wedding of her dreams. But the best part was yet to come. After the wedding, I arranged a special trip for our honeymoon. I didn't want to take her to all of the typical places around the world because, well, she was so special. I met a guy at the office who liked visiting beautiful islands that not many people knew about, and he hooked me up with a trip. The island was in South Africa. It was a small patch of land in the middle of the ocean, and you could only get there by boat. As we arrived on the island, my beautiful Amanda was smitten by everything she saw and I was smitten by her in return. The place looked so wild, so untouched. I just love it, she said as she hugged me. We had a house right in the middle of the island. Everything we would need was there. There were no animals around, nothing but trees and the water surrounded us. It was some sort of resort, but only one couple could be there at the time. It was pretty exclusive. As the boat that brought us was leaving, we stood there on the beach taking it all in. I can't believe we're going to have the entire place to ourselves. We can walk around naked. We can do whatever we want with no restrictions, Amanda said while kissing me passionately. I was thrilled with the naked part and couldn't wait to do it. That evening, I made a barbecue as the fridge was filled with the most expensive meats from Wagyu to Black Angus. It's delicious. God, it's amazing to eat under the stars. And the sky is so clear here. Amanda said while taking a bite of her food. This whole week will be amazing, I know it, I told her while putting my hand on her. But instead of amazing, I should have said horrifying. The next day we went swimming and cracked some coconuts as it was something she wanted to do for a long time. We had an amazing time. And the best part of that day was that we walked around naked without anyone interrupting us. However, that night, something happened. We were sleeping soundly when I heard the door open. I woke up and went to see what was going on. It was indeed open. But what could it have been? We were alone there, so I blamed it on the wind. As I was closing it, I heard a voice coming from behind the trees. I slowly went over there after I grabbed the biggest knife I had. I cut through the thick vegetation and saw a small fire on the ground. And next to it, a woman sitting there with her back toward me. Hello? I asked. She didn't respond. I started walking toward her. As I did, she started speaking, but it was a language I couldn't understand. It seemed like she was speaking and singing at the same time. Shortly after, she started flailing her arms out, and I noticed that she was holding a bunch of dried up leaves that were smoldering. I went in front of her. The woman had a strange face, and her eyes were closed. She kept moving her arms and saying those enchantments. Everything got cold all of a sudden. I only had a pair of shorts and a t-shirt on. It felt like the temperature dropped under 40 degrees. Excuse me, 
I said while putting my hand on her shoulder. At that moment, she opened her eyes. I fell on my back. The woman got up. Her eyes were as white as snow without any pupils. You lost her! The woman yelled in English and a cloud of red smoke surrounded her. I had a hard time breathing. My chest was hurting from all of that smoke. I started coughing and gasping for air. I rolled around the ground trying so hard to get away from what was suffocating me. Finally, I managed to get some oxygen into my lungs. I got up, but I still felt woozy. I looked around. The woman wasn't there anymore. And the small fire that she had in front of her was gone too. No trace of it. I went back to Amanda. Did I hallucinate? What the hell do they put in this water? I said, trying to make myself feel better. I went inside the house and walked straight to the bedroom. Amanda? I called her upon seeing that she wasn't in the bed. I yelled again and again, but she didn't respond. I went outside to look for her. As the sun came up, I noticed something in the water. A head of blonde hair glistened in the sunlight. Amanda, what are you doing? I yelled as she was going further and further into the ocean. I jumped in the water, swimming toward her, but it was like the current was taking me back to shore. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't reach her. All I could do was look at my wife as she disappeared into the infinite ocean. Years later, I stumbled across a legend from those parts. I don't remember the name of the demon, but it said that on the 13th of every month, it takes the shape of an old man or old woman, and it goes hunting for a soul to take to hell. It said it possesses the person, and he or she commits suicide. I still have a Polaroid of me and Amanda. It's dated the 12th of June. She disappeared in the ocean the day after. Did you enjoy the first story? If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Oh, if you want your broccoli to be served fresh, then don't forget to hit the bell icon. Keep munching. Honeymoon. That was one word that always brought out the joy in me. I don't know why, but it always did. And coupled with the fact that this time it was my own honeymoon, my joy was even contagious. I was happy and everyone was happy for me. After about six months of dating, I eventually got married to my Prince Charming, Jacob. He was everything and more. I just had to be happy for myself. The following day was amazing. Jacob was naturally an emotional person and when I walked down the aisle with my dad, he just smiled in tears as he looked at me with utmost wonder. Who knew that just being in a wedding gown could make a grown man cry more so in front of many people? He didn't try to hide the fact that he adored and cherished me. And at that moment, I just knew that he was the one I would keep falling in love with over and over again. The program went by really fast. Or I just didn't focus on all what the priest said. I was far too interested in something else. The face of the one that was about to be called my husband. And then it came. You may now kiss the bride. Jacob walked towards me with love, and I just stood here ready to receive him with love. It was at that moment that I understood what he meant when he said the kiss on your wedding day just feels different. With stories that I've heard from girls, I was too excited to plan my honeymoon when Jacob told me that it would be a surprise and that I shouldn't bother planning anything as he already had everything under control. Eventually, it was here the surprise he had planned, and I couldn't wait for it. He drove us to the airport, and when I asked where we were going, he merely smiled at me and told me to relax. We ended up traveling to Los Angeles. I was ecstatic. It was everything I wanted and more. We rented a car, and I sat beside him, smiling. Where are we headed? Jacob laughed without mirth. <laughs> You'll find out, dear. I looked at him again. It wasn't like him to joke around with anything he said, and it was not like him to also use the word dear. He hated it with so much passion. Either way, I sat quietly in the car and just assumed it was part of the surprise he had planned for me, even if that meant that a part of me was scared about whatever was going to happen. A few minutes later, or so I thought, I slept off at some point during the drive and only woke up when I felt the car already come to a stop. When I opened my eyes, 
Jacob was no longer at the driver's side or anywhere near the car. In front of me was a very big mansion. I got down from the car and walked towards the house while taking every step carefully. The house was really beautiful. I'd give that to whoever came up with blueprints of the house. Mrs. Thompson. I turned back at the voice that called me, and in front of me was a man probably in his thirties. If not for the fact that I didn't know who he was, I would have hugged him so much for calling me that name. It felt good to be a part of someone now, to be a part of Jacob. The man told me he was our butler and would be taking care of us. I wrapped my arms around my middle and searched for Jacob. As if I summoned him, he came out of the house and walked straight towards me. My smile froze at the cold look on his face. I asked him if anything was wrong, and he said no. He went ahead to tell me that this was my new home. I didn't know what to make of it. We never discussed moving here. As much as I loved the house, I loved my life back at home. I told Jacob that he had to be joking because there was no way we could live here. His face turned red with anger, and he marched up to me and slapped my face. My hand touched my face in shock. Jacob just slapped me. You're my wife, he spat. You do exactly as I say. I own you now. Jacob? He slapped me again. Tears slipped down my face, and I wordlessly followed him inside. I got married to a monster. He took me to one of the rooms and locked me inside. He told me he'll be back for me. I was dreading when he would come back. I sat on the bed crying. There was no way to contact anyone. My phone was still in the car. How didn't I see this before? I was carried away by his handsome face and blue eyes that I failed to notice that Jacob was a psychopath. Jacob came back after a while and forced himself on me. No matter how much I pleaded with him, he didn't listen. He left me sobbing on the bed, a wicked smile on his lips. When the butler brought in my dinner, I kept the knife, a plan forming in my mind. I wasn't going to be anyone's plaything. Jacob had picked the wrong person to mess with. The door to my room opened, and I sat up in bed with some trepidation. Jacob came inside with another man and barely glanced my way. I stood up from the bed and tried to put as much distance between us as possible. Jacob and the other man started kissing, and my jaw dropped open. I couldn't tear my eyes away as they began to undress each other. When they were both in their boxer shorts, Jacob looked at me and laughed. Want to join in our fun? He asks before grabbing me and planting his lips on mine. I suddenly brought my knee up, and he doubled over in pain. I immediately pointed the knife to his face, and he backed away. I ran out without looking back. I heard the sound of a door opening and the butler's voice. My breaths came in frightened gasps. I saw the keys to the rental car on the table and dove for it. The car started as the butler came running out. I drove the car through the gate and I was free. Now that I escaped, I let the tears run free. How was I supposed to trust anyone after this? This was one honeymoon I would like to forget.